Hi, I'm Tim. Welcome and thanks for logging on. If you love this watch, email me. I'm T Masso with thewatchbox.com. It's in the description below. Your purchase and pricing email question line for buying this or any watch you see on our platforms. Reach out to me directly. I am T Masso at thewatchbox.com. Today we're discussing one of my favorite new watches of 2021. This is the Omega Speedmaster Chronoscope, vintage inspired but full sized. It's 43 millimeters in diameter in stainless steel, 13.2 millimeters thick, made thinner by a manual wind movement, 48.7 millimeters from lug tip to lug tip with a 21 millimeter spacing between the lugs. We'll throw the watch on my wrist, which is 16 centimeters in circumference, and you can see that it's actually not that big. Because it has pivoted end links to the bracelet, the total distance of this 43 millimeter watch is only 48.7 across the wrist, which is pretty compact. That's why I could actually recommend this watch in good conscience to a wrist as small as 14 and a half centimeters circumference. You can see from over the top, the lugs aren't overwhelming the edge of my wrist, and I'm actually pulling it pretty tight. Because it is a manual wind, it's a lot thinner than other Omega chronographs, so it will slide under most sleeves, including all but the absolute tightest of dress cuffs then over the top once more, and then finally down the barrel. So you can see how much clearance I really have. That's the definitive shot. The bracelet is vintage inspired. You can see it has polished intermediate satin primaries. It has a conforming end link. It also has taper from the end link down to the clasp. The outer faces are polished. We have many small removable links. So with so many removable and the incremental difference from removing just one being so small, you're almost guaranteed to get the right fit. That said, there is a system here, a push button that allows you to change the anchoring of the clasp internally. It's only about two and a half to three millimeters of adjustment, but instead of having to use a strap tool to move a spring bar, there's a simple push button that allows you to slide this micro adjustment in and out. The clasp is attractive. You can see it features satination, media blasting, and polish, so the attention to detail is good. It is a trigger release. You have to press both. The gauge of the steel is thick, including for the single swing arm. Rolling around the case, we are very familiar with these liar style lugs that have been around since the early 60s on Omega watches. An inward bevel and an outward bevel, with the outward bevel being polished and running end to end. Satination, longitudinal across the case band, the underside of the bezel is polished. And then we have a shear guard profile with a little bit of countersink to the pushers and the crown that first debuted on the Speedmaster Professional in the mid 1960s. The idea being just to provide a little bit more protection from getting sheared off by impact. Taking a quick look, you can see there's an Omega logo on the crown, and we have a tachymeter bezel that can be used for gauging the speed of an object, such as a car over a race car over a kilometer. I always like to use that example because it's a natural one. But on the dial itself, we actually have a triple scale telemeter which is used to gauge distance, a pulsation scale, which is used to extrapolate beats per minute, and then, of course, we have the tachymeter scale, which can be used for gauging speed. We have an aluminum insert for the external tachymeter, giving the watch a vintage look, and then a dramatically cambered and boxed sapphire that is designed to evoke a mid-century plexiglass, and it really does. We have an upscale look with fired blued hands that have been polished, and then we also have applied blued numerals, which is one of the giveaways that this is a modern watch, is that's a far higher standard of execution than you would have found on a lot of watches from the 40s and 50s. In addition to the triple scale at center, you can see we have a track outboard on which you can read seconds, minutes, and chronograph fractions of seconds. Then we have a concentric groove around the underside of the hour track. We have sunken sub-registers. We have our constant running seconds at 3 o'clock. And then coaxial chronograph hours and minutes at 3 o'clock. That's 9. That's 3. I know my numbers. I'm just getting myself straightened out there. The nice thing about the 3 o'clock register is that because it has both the hours and the minutes, you have a very clean, vintage-inspired twin register dial, and you don't have to worry about the clutter of a third register, nor do you have to worry about the clutter of a date, as this vintage-inspired watch has none. So it's a very clean look. Now, when I pull the crown out all the way and activate hacking seconds, you can see that it stops the seconds, and it stops everything. But there's an intermediate position where I can actually move the hour hand independently. Running seconds continue, chrono seconds continue, chronograph timing continues, standing minutes it's not a problem, unaffected. This allows me to change my time zone without inconvenience, but also without slowing my watch and having to reset it. Flip it all over. 
we have the caliber 9908. Now, this is a converted 9900. Part of the reason that it's been made manual is to thin the watch out. 13.2 makes this one of the thinnest Omega chronographs in years, but also to align with the first half 20th century inspiration of this watch as the manual wind chronograph was the rule up until 1969. So we have twin mainspring barrels for a 60 hour power reserve and they are phased mainsprings in series which means the curves are designed to ensure a relatively flat continuous torque curve and constant torque to the coaxial escapement so it doesn't surge when fully wound nor does it lose a whole lot of amplitude after 18, 24, 36 hours like a standard single barrel movement will. Now you you can see we have a full balance bridge and a free sprung balance for shock tolerance and then the whole watch featuring a anti-magnetic balance staff balance wheel silicon hairspring and escapement anti-magnetic to over 15,000 gauss which is exceptional there is a coaxial escapement as envisioned by george daniels it replaces the sliding grinding contact of a swiss lever with a more efficient tangential contact it's a double impulse direct and indirect impulse escapement and it does improve power reserve chronometry while reducing maintenance needs. You could see it on its separate bridge just below the primary balance bridge. Now we also have a column wheel for cycling the chronograph which makes for a nice crisp feel and sound. And then we have a vertical clutch which has no play. So when I start the chronograph there's absolutely zero jump or stagger to it. It just commences. And you can leave it running full time if you want so as long as you keep the watch wound you get constant seconds at center along with minutes and hours some people just prefer to have the running chronograph full time because it's easier to read and that's also okay we have a couple of elements that are distinctive inside this 50 meter water resistant case including blackened screws and arabesque spiral coat de genève which omega always likes to boast are a brand exclusive so there is a lot to love in this watch reach out to team also at thewatchbox.com for purchase and pricing details of this omega speedmaster chronoscope